India today is an important spot for electronics manufacturing. The global companies are investing and setting up manufacturing units here in India. Modi government has already laid down the platform for big investment in electronics manufacturing sector in India. We have with us Mr. Glenn Smith, President and CEO of Mauser Electronics, one of the electronic distribution company in the world. Let us talk about Mauser's plan to grab the increasing market in India. How, what is the growth of your story of Mauser's story in 43 years? Well, in 43 years, it's been a, there's been a lot of changes. <laughs> uh, when I started with the company back in 1973, we were still selling vacuum tubes. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, we don't sell vacuum tubes anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I've seen so many things happen. The internet was really a surprise to us. We certainly didn't expect uh, how that would change our business. Mm -hmm. We we used to produce a catalog. Yeah. Uh, and now uh, there's no reason for that really. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've seen a lot of things change, but you know, what we haven't seen change is the fact that um, the customers still want the best service possible, and and that's really what we strive to do. Okay. Uh, the the one thing we've seen change more than anything is how short, how much shorter the, the uh, engineering cycle has become. Okay. Engineers just seem to be really compressed in, mm -hmm. in everything they do. Okay. So, and you have been seeing the global electronic industry evolving very closely, mm -hmm. right? So, how how will you narrate the story of electronic component distribution in USA and the rest of the world? Because you have seen the, the, this market very closely. Yeah, we, we've seen changes uh, in, in the market. I think the, the U.S. Uh, had seen quite a few changes. Uh, the U.S. most ended up at one point was sort of like Europe and, and maybe the rest of uh, Asia mm -hmm. where there was very uh, fragmented distribution. Uh, so there was uh, distributors in, in very little small territories, uh, but the, the model has changed now that um, in distribution, you know, everything is more uh, global. Okay. In fact, uh, it seems if you're not global, then, then that's going to really be a problem for you because mm -hmm. customers have their production all over the world. Mm -hmm. They may design in one place and build somewhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something that uh, I don't think anybody expected, but we had to all react to. Mm -hmm. So what change we need here in India to increase the electronic uh, means distribution sector to, to make it a more wide market here in India? So what thing is lacking here in India? What's lacking? I think, um, I, I don't know if there's anything lacking. I think uh, that, that it's just a matter of uh, progression mm -hmm. uh, a little bit. Uh, I, I think that uh, there has been, uh, there's a lot of designs being done. Uh, but I think that one of the things that has to happen is people have to do have to do a little bit more thinking globally. Okay. Uh, I think people think about production from what I've seen, talking about mm -hmm. uh, talking to customers that their product is designed for the local market. Yeah. But I think they need to think about uh, is this product really just a local product, or really is there a global market? Okay. Uh, because there's a lot of global companies that are trying to bring that product into India. Yeah. So uh, I think that that's the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. But uh, for us, uh, you know, we're working with many engineers. We work uh, with new engineers every day. Mm -hmm. So there's certainly an up and coming market here. Okay. So Mauser has traversed a long way to reach eighth position, right? Uh, and the top global electronic component distribution list worldwide. So what are your plans to further scale up the ladder? Well, I think that um, what we look at doing is actually getting more engaged with the engineer. So mm -hmm. we're not really trying to go, I guess, uh, the way we're trying to go up the ladder, mm -hmm. I suppose, is by going backwards uh, into the design cycle okay. uh, to be further at the beginning of the design to help mm -hmm. the engineer do a better job mm -hmm. where we can add more value. Okay. So, uh, you know, if we can... If we can reach the engineer when he's thinking about uh, what technology should I use mm -hmm. and not what component should I use, okay. that's, a, that's a different mindset. Okay. And, and that's how I think we've been successful and that's how we've added the, to the size of our company and I think that's going to propel us in the future as well. Mm -hmm. The same model. So what are the plans running as of now? I'm to sorry? Get, yeah, what are the plans, plans of the Mauser running as of now uh, to get in touch with the engineers? Well, one of the things we well, for for example, one of the things we've done in in India now in Bangalore, we've actually brought on a number of engineers, hmm. uh, and they are responsible for product content. Hmm. So they're writing information about the products, 
about applications, mm -hmm. and they're also working on uh, with the with the suppliers mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that the parametric information, the product the product uh, specifications are clearly understood. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I think uh, by getting engineers on our team, more and more engineers on our team, I think that's how we we do a better job in that area. So it is helping you out, and. Uh, once they, they are in the process of uh, the designing done for the different projects, so it is high likely that they are using your component in the design. Yeah, that's that's what we're hoping. I mean, what we're trying to do is help our suppliers. Mm -hmm. We're help the manufacturers of the the latest devices and technologies. Mm -hmm. We're helping them find a marketplace for their products. But at the same time, we're helping the engineer because what we're doing is we're, we're introducing the latest technology mm -hmm. to that engineer mm -hmm. so that when he builds a product, He's got a product with better performance, a better life cycle, uh, better power management capabilities, everything that you need be to be competitive in the global market. Yeah. Okay, so off-grid question, uh, legendary Mr. Warren Buffett being one of the biggest philanthropists of our time must have casted the shadow of his persona over the philosophy of Mauser. And how do you analyze the sentence and how do you see uh, the future of Mauser Electronics here in India and worldwide? Well, okay, there's a few questions there, but, uh, you know, really, in the case of Warren Buffett, I think that, that we got very lucky to be acquired by Berkshire Hathaway and, and Warren Buffett, and, and it's been uh, really a great experience. Uh, you know, I've, I've gotten, uh, I've had to spend, uh, uh, at one time, a few hours uh, explaining our company and our philosophy to uh, Bill Gates. Uh, I wouldn't have to do that if I wasn't part of Berkshire Hathaway. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's quite different. But the way that Warren has really in affected our business is really telling us that uh, I bought you because you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. so I don't need to tell you what to do. Yeah. And and that's not the normal way that a CEO mm -hmm. would tell people working for them mm -hmm. uh, to just do your job and don't worry about me. Okay. Uh, but the, the thing that he tells us that's most important is managing our reputation. So mm -hmm. doing what's right for the customer, doing what's right for all of our employees mm -hmm. because uh, he cares more about the reputation of the company than okay. about profit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's been, a, that's been a good philosophy and it's one really that uh, I think is is uh, part of his uh, philanthropic uh, uh, view on things, as well as uh, just uh, the way he thinks business should be done. Okay. So, if you ask to uh, 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 sketch his personality, personal, personal, what, what is that exactly? Uh, wow. Uh, you know, certainly in the financial world, he's a rock star. Yeah. But uh, but he no, doesn't no. act like a rock star. He acts like a normal guy. Uh, you know, we, uh, I, I went to his office, uh, we had sandwiches in his office, so mm -hmm. there's nothing pretentious about uh, mm -hmm. what he does. Mm -hmm. he, he is just a genuine, honest guy, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and really I think he's one of the biggest jokesters uh, uh, when it comes to uh, his writings. If you read the annual reports, he has jokes in his annual report. He's telling stories mm -hmm. that people can understand and not just talking about financial models. So he's really just a down-to-earth guy. What is the one big, biggest factor that uh, uh, Ms. Warren Buffett is Warren Buffett now? What's one biggest factor of his personality? Biggest factor of his personality. Um, that he's really, uh, I, I think it just has to be how honest he is. He is, uh, he just, he really cares about people. Um, I think that, um, you know, rather than talk about his personality, which is it's a wonderful personality, I'll tell you the one thing I learned from him more than anything was, to me, I, I never expected this. I went to his office, and on his desk, there's three baskets. There's an in basket, okay. there's an out basket, and there's a basket that says, too hard. Mm -hmm. And I asked him about that. He says, well, if something's too hard, I just put it in there because I don't know what to do. And I thought, wow, if if something can be too hard for Warren Buffett, then it's okay if it's too hard for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he, that's the way he is. He, he wants to make sure that we do what we understand, and he only does what he understands. And I think that's probably uh, the philosophy and kind of the personality that he has. He, he does what, what makes sense to him. <laughs> okay. So what, what would be the next big thing that might spur growth in the electronic uh, market in India and the world? And can you point out the emerging markets and the technologies that look promising to you? 
Well, you know, that's a really tough question to answer because I think there's so many. I don't think there's one big thing. Mm -hmm. There's like a hundred big things uh, okay. that are out there. And I think everybody knows what they are. There's IoT and, mm -hmm. and there's, uh, you know, NFC, near field communications. Okay. And there, there's so many technologies that are, uh, that are there that are involved in healthcare, uh, point of, point of uh, healthcare. Um, I just think it's going to be all of those things converging. I think certainly you've got to have the right sensors and you've got to have the right uh, software. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the right platform to, to decode all the data that you receive. Yeah. But I think that uh, what we're seeing right now happening, the explosion in all of those areas from sensors to IoT is just going to continue. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, th the number of devices that could be connected uh, and would make sense to connect are just enormous. And I think that's what we're going to continue to see happening. Yeah. Okay. So IT has changed the face of the world, uh, face of business that we do now, right? Uh, say e-commerce business, like uh, the people are, it's, it's, it's growing like anything, yeah. right? So keeping IT in mind, uh, what are the shape it would like to take uh, in five years from now? Wow, you know, it's Is really... Is there anything that we can see five years from, from now? You know, it's so hard to say. The internet is, is not uh, really old by any standards yet, mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, what we're going to see from that in the future is hard to say. Uh, I think that uh, some of the things that are being done with, uh, uh, you know, like IBM is doing with their cognitive uh, intelligence, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm just not sure where all this is going. It seems to be that you have to have technology to operate your business. I know we do. Uh, we, we found that we, ha we could not operate our business without always being uh, they're looking for the latest technical ways to run our operation, to automate our warehouse. Uh, you know, we, we found that we either needed to scale or we were going to fail. And I think that um, that's all because of IT technologies, and that's going to be the way of the future, I think, for every business. Okay, if you go into the future, right, maybe five to ten years from now, so what would be the needs of the people uh, at that time? The, I'm sorry, the... the if, if, if you go into the future, like maybe five to ten years from now. So what would be the needs of the people electronically? Oh, electronic needs. Yeah. Wow, I don't know. If, uh, you know, <laughs> boy, uh, I, I'd like to answer that how Warren uh, would answer a question about the future. He says, I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> uh, I, 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 you know, it's hard to say. I think we see everything happening uh, now that, uh, you know, there's always going to be breakthroughs. Uh, I think, you know, power has been a limitation right now. You know, enough battery power to do some of the things that would, you would like to do. And I think we're going to see some technological breakthroughs with power, maybe graphing technologies or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, things we don't know about right now. And I think, um, I, I think that we're going to be, that electronics is going to be so embedded in everything we do, we're just not even going to think about it anymore. Uh, we still think about it, and probably being in this electronics field, we're going to keep thinking about it, mm. but the average person is just going to take it for granted. And I think that's going to be a big change in the way things uh, exist. Is it's uh, Electronics is just behind the scenes, and nobody takes uh, a thought about it. Uh, so would it be like a fairy tale kind of thing in the world? Uh, uh, I suppose you could say that. I think... Uh, I think electronics is uh, mysterious to people now, and I think it'll become even more mysterious to mm. people mm. as it evolves in the future. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, and the Mauser enjoys a global reputation. Uh, what are the greatest challenges that the company faces serving the worldwide customer space? Well, there's a, there is a lot of challenges. Uh, I think they come down to uh, really. Uh, languages, currencies, and regulations. Uh -huh. <laughs> that seems to be the three biggest okay. challenges. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, as far as handling the logistics and finding the latest components, um, that part's relatively uh -huh. easy. Uh -huh. uh, but how do you get it to the customer's d door? Uh -huh. um, that that re requires things with regulations and, and uh, logistics knowledge that uh, uh, is difficult. And that's the hardest thing, I think, for us right now, mm -hmm. and uh, and for everybody. Uh, you know, how do you get a product to a customer in India? Sometimes it's hard, actually. Uh, but the customers don't care about that. They okay. they expect it to be simple for them. <laughs> <laughs> so because these are there, there are such certain things which are inevitable in the market. Actually, we can't do anything about that. Yes, that's true. Uh, you know, the, the there's nothing we can do to change uh, the the regulation. We just have to wait. Yeah. Uh, that and there's uh, you know uh, make in India uh, uh, 
you know, initiative now that uh, maybe will make it a little easier mm -hmm. uh, because not all of the components can be made in any one country. No. So the, con the different countries are going to have to contribute technologies mm -hmm. in order to build a product. And I think with the government easing of regulation, I think that would make it a lot simpler to, to help India do that. So how important is Indian market for you? Looking at the fact that the Indian government is, has initiated and attracted a lot of investment here in India now. So how important is Indian market for Mosa? Well, it's really important for a couple things. It's not just the customers here. There's there's about 10,000, at least 10,000 electronics companies in India. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so there, that's big. Uh, there's a lot of people, but we think India is more up and coming. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think the potential has not even close to being reached. It's, it's very small. Mm -hmm. But we like not just the marketplace, but we like the people that we can hire here. So we're not just selling here. We're actually, we have our IT support center. We have our marketing support center. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a lot of things here in India that's beyond just uh, selling uh, or, or doing commerce. It's actually doing support for our global operations. And I think that, um, that that's really made India really important to us. So what are your what are your impressions for making India and manufacture here in India? What are your impressions on that? I think it's a great idea. I, I think it's it's got to be designed in India and then built in India, mm -hmm. but it needs to be designed and built for a global customer, not just designed and built for a local customer. And I think that uh, that's very possible to do. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that there's. Um, there's plenty of smart people here. I've met a lot of them, mm -hmm. and uh, we've hired we've hired some smart people. Uh, we, we'd like to hire more smart people. Uh, it, you know, there's just so much potential here that I think it's just a matter of time, and uh, and we're patient. Mm -hmm. uh, so, as as India continues to grow and build product, then we hope to be part of that. Do you think the Indian regulations or government policies are supporting that? I think that uh, I think the new policies. Uh, will support it, mm -hmm. but I think any policy takes time to make a change. Yeah, definitely. So I don't know exactly when that's going to start, but the philosophy is right and the strategy seems right. So I think it's a matter of execution mm -hmm. and I, I, I have confidence from what I've seen uh, talking today to the people at this conference uh, that they seem committed to, to making this happen. So what is this still lacking, whether it is infrastructure or the government policies or anything else? Uh, I, I, I think I would have to say the only thing lacking uh, still is um, is really just uh, the infrastructure mm -hmm. that's needed to uh, to support you know a true world class manufacturing. There there's some there's some challenges in transportation and other things, and you just have to be located in the right spot. It seems, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know with. Uh, with all of that change, you know, I think it's getting better. It's improving, and I think that that's that's going to continue to to be uh, to be good for India. Mm -hmm. and, but I think it's also uh, uh, getting the right mindset uh, about uh, the global environment, and uh, and I, I just think it's going to con continue to improve. And I don't see any problems. Uh, I don't see any challenges other than just the challenge of continuing to move that direction, which I think is is happening now. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time you are here in India. You have visited uh, on, uh, previously as well. Yes, I've been here before, uh, and uh, you know I, I really enjoyed this time. I got to go to a few more places. I got to see the famous Taj Mahal. Never got to see that before. So uh, <laughs> it, India is uh, really a diverse place. And I really enjoyed uh, uh, seeing it um, uh, a little bit more close up this time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I hope to come back very soon. Okay. So you must have interacted a, a lot many people here in India in the industrial sector in electronics. So what is your impression about uh, those people? I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, what is your impression about the industry people here working in India? Well, the people I've seen are are very, uh, very dedicated uh, people, very genuine people, and uh, that strikes me as uh, as very important. Uh, you know, there are some cultures where the people. I'm not sure what to think about the people uh, in different parts of the world, but in India, I feel very comfortable with the people I talk to. Everyone seems to be very sincere, and uh, and the people working and run, running the companies that I've met today, uh, they seem to be just really down to earth people that really are interested in not just uh, helping their company to improve, but they seem to be very interested in helping the rest of the Indian economy too. And I, I was impressed by that. Okay, India has taken the challenge of uh, making India as a manufacturing hub of the world, right, after China. 
Yes. Right. So do you think the Indian people are competent enough, uh, maybe intellectually uh, or and, and the resource wise, do you think they are competent enough? Oh, I don't have any doubt about that. I think that uh, the, the, the Indian people are definitely competent. I think that the, the challenge may be uh, that there, I think uh, today I learned 75 percent of the of the people in India are in the agricultural field, uh, and that's only 20 percent of GDP. So uh, that that's quite uh, similar to how China was a few years ago. So I think that uh, that there's plenty of labor, uh, but there may be a question of skills mm -hmm. uh, for production and for manufacturing. But there's a lot of engineers, so. I think that uh, the getting the right mix of skills is going to be the challenge, mm -hmm. uh, but it's but I think it can be done. So India is on the right track, is it? Oh, I think so. From what I've seen, yes, mm -hmm. uh, it's very definitely on the right track. Okay. okay. So, what two important things uh, that has made Mauser industry leading export? Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, what are the two important things that has made Mauser industry's leading expert in global e-commerce, MPI marketing, and organic growth? So, just two things, two to three things. So, there is um, there's there's really a few things. One one is making sure that the customer is always treated first. Uh, mm -hmm. The most important thing is the customer. Uh, if if we don't give the customer everything that they need, then they'll go somewhere else. So, I think we've done a pretty good job of that. Uh, in, in actually making sure that we've connected the customer to the right technologies, uh, we've paired up with some really key manufacturers, Texas Instruments, Intel, NXP, I mean, Microchip, I could go on and on and on, mm -hmm. where they're trusting us to launch their new technologies. So I think that trust from the supplier and that trust from the customer has really been the key thing to us. So really, uh, you know, trust, is, is probably the most important element in our business. Okay. Because the customer has to trust us, not only are we going to deliver the right product, mm -hmm. we deliver it on time, yes. and are we going to provide him the latest technologies. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think that's really what uh, has made us successful, and I'm, we can keep doing all that. Okay. So you believe in the organic growth of the company, so don't believe in the acquisition kind of things elsewhere in the world or in India? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we, we certainly would be open to an acquisition mm -hmm. or two, uh, but uh, we, we've managed to grow organically mm -hmm. to uh, quite, quite a decent-sized company now, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's because what we do is needed uh, all over the world. Uh, there's engineers everywhere, and there's manufacturing everywhere, and so uh, if, it, if we needed to acquire someone to grow, we would do that. But right now we're growing so fast that it's difficult to think about growing even faster. <laughs> so what do you think where would uh, the Mauser be in uh, two to three years down the line? Well, I'm hoping we can double our business again mm -hmm. in two or three years. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping we'll be better globally. We'll, be, we'll have more currencies, more people, more, uh, more, more transaction capabilities than we've got today. And uh, I think just hopefully we'll be just getting better and better. And it's just a challenge to, to do that, to stay up with the technology and stay up with the logistics and all those regulations we talked about. Uh, and I think that uh, we're, we're going to try to just keep, keep doing the same thing we're doing today. We're going to have to do the same thing in the future. There's going to be changes. We just have to kind of wait and see what they are and hope that uh, we can understand how to make our, uh, make our customer happier. Okay, what uh, target you have set for yourself and for your colleagues in India? Uh, well, we've said we've actually our targets are about the number of customers. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to find uh, more customers. We want to help more customers to design products. So uh, we we measure our people on how many how many customers buy from us, uh, how many visitors to our website, and we're seeing that grow quite fast. Uh, India, in particular, the number of uh, people that visit our website from India is extremely yeah. high, and it's growing very very fast. So. That's the metrics that we look at. The dollars are important, but really the more important thing is, you know, how many people are you reaching? Anything else would you like to uh, tell from the platform of Daily Times TV? Uh, no, I, I'm just. I just want to say thank you for for uh, talking to me today. Thank I've you. enjoyed meeting you, and uh, and I, I look forward to uh, to seeing this video, and I and I look forward <laughs> to seeing you next time I'm in India. Thank you, and. Just last question, 
So how important it is to organize the summit like IESA Vision Summit? I think this is really a good thing. I see a lot of people connecting and talking out there, and I think that you know the industry has to work together. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, it, it can't be every man, every company for themselves. It has to be how do we make uh, India better? How do we make electronics better? And it takes a group of people to do that, and it takes common common interest and in, in a common direction. And I think that this type of summit uh, helps to make that happen. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.